Hi. All right. The title of the message is Empowering the Good Deposit. Empowering the Good Deposit. It says in 2 Timothy 1.14, Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. God has called you and I to guard something that is precious. And that's you. The deposit that he put inside of you. Guard it and guard it well. He started a good work. And he's faithful to complete it. And God is calling you and I to guard what is good. Guard what is valuable. Guard what is precious. Guard it well with the help of the Holy Spirit. Something that you would guard is something that is important to you. Something that is precious to you. Something that is valuable to you. Is priceless. You would guard that and you'd guard it well. Sometimes we don't do that very well. Sometimes we don't guard what God has called us to guard. When he says, I guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit, concentration on the impartation. Come on. God has called you and I to concentrate this season on guarding what is good. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. And God is calling us because he put something grand inside of you. He put something priceless inside of you. He put himself inside of you. And God has his presence living inside of you. And he wants that to be guarded well. Because he wants you to be vibrant. He wants you to go to new levels. He's called you to go to places you've never gone before spiritually. Don't get distracted. Don't allow things to come in place and snuff out the blessing of God in your life. Because God hasn't called you to be snuffed out. He's called you to be empowered by his presence. The good deposit needs attention. It needs attention. It needs your attention. And you need to guard it and guard it well. Protect it. Watch over it. Keep it healthy. Keep it healthy. Keep it growing. Keep it safe. Treasure that good deposit. Cherish it and cherish it well. Don't contaminate it. Don't contaminate the good deposit. Don't allow the flesh to come in place. Don't just allow yuckiness Amen. to come inside. That's right. Don't allow compromise to come on that good deposit. Because that is going to weaken what God has called to empower. Come on, who's alive in the house today? Come on. Because God's called us to break those things off. Don't feed the flesh. Don't feed the flesh. God has called us to feed his presence in our life and feed that good deposit and guard it like a pit bull, like a bulldog. Guarding that. You're trying to get close to that good deposit? You're going to get bit. You're going to get it because it's not, you're not going to get to this good deposit because I'm guarding it and I'm guarding it well. When you walk into a room, everything should change. If you got the good deposit vibrant, if you got it healthy, if you got it strong and mighty, if you got it lit up, if you're called like what the word says, you're like a city on a hill. You're not just like this little light of mine. No, we're talking about a city on a hill. A city on a hill walks into a room. Everything needs to change. That's right. Because the, the atmosphere will change because of the living God that lives inside of you. But if your deposit is weak, if your deposit is compromised... If your deposit is, is just barely having a little teeny light and it's almost ready to go out, 
then you're not going to be the influence that God has called you and I to be. And he's called us to be a great influence. So when you walk into a room, everything should change. Because who lives inside of you? Jesus Christ lives inside of you and I. So things need to change. The atmosphere needs to change. Sometimes people walk into a room and the atmosphere changes negative because they got negative mindset. They got negative mentality. They haven't been feeding themselves with the presence of God. They, they've been into gossip and they've been not into the word and they've been into self and they've been fighting with their mate and they've been just, just flesh directed. And God is not wanting that because he wants you to be such a huge influence when you walk into a room that the atmosphere changes. You see, how are we going to reach this world if we don't have a good deposit guarded? That's so true. It's so important that the light, the sun on a hill... The presence of God is so strong inside of you and I that God is calling us to have that empowerment, have that empowerment so strong in our life. It says in 2 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. And we will be renewed. Colossians 3.10 says, And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Romans 13.14 Instead, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. No provision for the flesh. Ezekiel 36.26 a new heart also I give you, and a new spirit I put in you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh which is tender, which is pliable, which is lit up with the presence of God. God wants to put that inside of you and I. I used to go hunting a lot with my dad, and he'd take me out duck hunting, and and one thing my dad liked to do is like, he liked to sh shoot anything that moves. <laughs> it's just the way he was. And, and he made sure that when he shot it, he didn't waste it. He'd take it home and eat it. And so we would go out duck hunting, and we go out to this lake, and there's these ducks, they, they're called coots. Uh, there's a few different names for them. One is, is coot, one is mud hen, and the other is a rice duck. They're all the same thing. And uh, they don't fly very high. They fly more like a chicken, but they, they're on the lake. And they just kind of flutter low and then land a couple hundred feet away in another spot. And my dad would be chasing these coots. And I would say, don't shoot the coot. I'd say to my dad, don't shoot the coot. And these hunters that they would come on the lake, they're there for mallards and, and widgeon ducks. And, and they would be so upset with my dad. They'd say, quit shooting the coot. <laughs> quit shooting the coot. And my dad go, I have just as much right as anybody else to be on the lake. I can shoot what I want. And so he'd be out there, and I'd go, oh, Jesus, help us here. And uh, I'd say, my dad, don't shoot the coot. These, these coots, they, they stunk. They, their meat was not good. Like, my, my dad would have to like, soak them, soak them in salt to try to get some of the strong taste out of them and everything. But my dad said, we're, we're keeping them. And so... He go home. We go home with just a whole boatload of coots and no mallards, no no region. Some of the good the good ducks that we didn't get those, and we had, but we got a lot of coots. There's a lot of people in life 
are shooting at the wrong things. You're, you're shooting at the wrong things. You're, you're shooting the coots. You're, you're going for things. You're going for things that stink, okay? You're going for things that co has compromise in it. You're going for things that you shouldn't be shooting. You shouldn't be shooting. I, I remember taking a, one of my friends out. My dad wasn't there that time, and we had uh, two of my friends. One, one was my friend that's experienced. Both of us knew that we're not going to shoot the coot. We're going to leave the coots alone. But we're going to go park on the other side of the lake, put out some decoys, and hide in the brush and wait for the mallards. <laughs> We'd call them in, you know, yeah, we're ready for the, for the mallard ducks. But um, my friend, as we were rowing across the lake, just, a, just ahead of us a little ways was a big flock of coots that were swimming just out ahead of us, not really flying, but they're just trying to stay ahead of us out a little bit. And boom! All of a sudden, right past my ear was the gun. I saw the fire come out of it. My ears rattled. My whole side rattled. I look, I go, what are you doing? And he goes, I'm shooting the coot. I said, no, 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 no. Don't shoot the coot. In fact, you about blew my head off. I could have turned the road a little bit sideways, and you would have had that barrel right here. And I would have been the coot right there on that spot. But um, don't shoot the coot. Come on. Don't, don't shoot compromise. Don't put your energy. Go for the good. Because God's got a good deposit. A good deposit for you. It's, it's good things. It's, it's filling your life with favor. Filling your life with blessing. Filling your life with double portion anointing for your life. You're called to be anointed. You're called to have the favor of God all over your life. Why are you shooting the coots? Why are you doing things that is not productive when God has called you to great things for your life? Call me the great and mighty things. Sin will take you farther than you want to go, not farther in the good way. It will take you farther than you want to go, and you'll stay there longer than you want. Sin has a way of holding you hostage in place where there's not the blessing of God on it. And you think, well, I'm just going to sin here just for a little bit. I'm going to sin for a little bit, and then, it's, then, I, then I'm going to decide not to sin, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go for God when I feel like it. Been you know, done been there, done that, wore the t-shirt. It's a lot harder than it looks when you start getting into to compromise right. and sin. Sin will hold you longer. Yep. It will hold you longer in the position of compromise than you want. And God has called you and I to walk in his blessings and favor for our life. But you got to feed the good deposit. you gotta, you got to feed it and care for it, nurture it, and bless it. Fill it up with the good things that God has, what he's calling you to. Because he's, he's calling you and I to guard that good deposit. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you know, it's not just you trying to guard something. It's you guarding it with the help. With the help of the helper, the Holy Spirit. God, I don't do very good at guarding that good deposit. Would you come alongside me, Holy Spirit? Would you give me the strength that I can guard what's valuable to you and it needs to be valuable to me? Would you help me? And God will. He will empower you. He will empower your situation. He will release the anointing on you when you need it. But you've got to say, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Help me, God. I surrender myself gladly to you today, God. I need you to give me the strength to walk this out. It seems hard sometimes to, to walk the walk and talk the talk. But God is saying, I give you the ability. I give you the power. It's there for you. Guard what I give you. Guard it well with the help of the Holy Spirit. You see, 
I've been digging into things that I shouldn't have been digging into. But I need to dig the scene with a faith lean. I need to dig the scene with a faith lean. I need to lean on the faith of God. Lean on the Holy Spirit for my life. Lean on His presence and His power. Come on now, who's with me today? Come on, are you with me today? Because God's called us to great things. How long are you going to keep nurturing emotional attachments to things that's destructive that does not give a rip about you? Come on, I said it. How long are you going to hold on to those emotional attachments? It has no care for your, your soul. No care, no care for your salvation. No care for the betterment of, of your whole heart and life. And we've been feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. When God said, that's not what you're supposed to feed. You need to feed with the help of the Holy Spirit that good deposit that I've given you. Because it's a good deposit. I, I went fishing with my, my son one time. We decided we're going we're gonna to go out. Something going on? Okay, so is that better? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so we were gonna go lingcod fishing down by Everett, and uh, so I had to put a deposit down to be able to keep my spot, uh, my two spots for me and my son to go fishing, and so I did. I put the deposits down, and then it's time for us to go. We went out lingcod fishing and limited out within about an hour. It was amazing. We got out to the spot. I, I caught such a big lingcod that I had to throw it back. It was so big. The, it's like, yeah, you can keep a 26 incher to 37 inches. You can keep them in that. If, if they're under 26, you have to throw them back. And if they're over 37, you got to throw them back. And I had like a 40-something inch long, probably about a 40-some pounder I caught. And it was really hard for me to <laughs> throw back that link cod. <laughs> See you later. Go make a whole bunch more link cods <laughs> out there. But I um, had to put the deposit down. The deposit guaranteed the position. The deposit guaranteed my position. When I came, I, I said, my name is Bryce, great house, my son, Jaredon, and we're here. And they said, oh, checked out with the records, yep, yep, yep. You, pay, you put the deposit down, come on in, let's go. You see, God has got a good deposit that he's put down for you. He's, he's paid it. He's paid the price. You're not your own. You've been bought at a price. That deposit is a good deposit. And God has put that deposit down on your behalf, guaranteeing the blessings that he has for your life. And all you need to do is you need to step in. Hi, that's me. I'll, I'll receive it. I'll receive it. I'll take it. Let's go lingcod fishing, baby. <laughs> Let, let's have your blessing, God. I'm stepping into your blessing. I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. I wasn't just a good guy for a couple weeks, and then God said, okay, I guess I'll take you. No. I, I was a jerk. I was self-centered, disappointed, frustrated, insecure. But something inside of me said, I need God. Yes. Something inside me said, I need God. And I came to God, and God says, I got a good deposit, yes. and I'm giving it to you. Yes. You didn't earn it. I paid for it. Yes. You see, we don't earn our salvation. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We don't earn our salvation. Nope. We just receive it. Yes. We receive that good deposit. But then God has called you and I. He's called us to take care of that good deposit. So that's our part. Our part is to guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Start loving you. Start taking care of you properly. Start loving you the right way. 
take care of that good deposit yes. and watch the blessing of God propel you into new places of blessing. Amen. Come on, I'm preaching to myself today. I know that. <laughs> receive it, Bryce. I receive it. You know, God has a full force of a fruitful harvest prepared for you and I. Full force. What do you do when you've fallen like an egg from a chicken on stilts? <laughs> Sometimes we felt like that. We felt like we've been like an egg dropped from a building so high. Whoosh, that our life has really just been fragmented, cracked, spread out. We don't know where to start. But if God can take a whole valley of dry bones, if he can take a whole valley of dry bones, bones that scattered across the canvas of the desert, if he can take those bones and breathe life into them, and have bone be attached to bone, tendon to tendon, flesh appear, the breath of God come into it, and they stand up like a vast army. If he can do that, he can take your life that's been going through difficulty and disappointments and frustrations, and you felt like an egg dropped from a chicken on stilts. God still is going to put together everything because he's going to hand you a good deposit. He's going to say, here, receive this. Beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning. Garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. You see, he takes what wasn't and he puts what is. And what is is his love for you today. His love is so grand for you. He wants to take what you are and he wants to give you such a good deposit and he just wants you to guard it. Guard it. Take care of it. Let it grow. Let it become a giant. Let it become a powerhouse. Let that good deposit be you like that city on a hill and you are walking into a room and everything changes. You're going to work and everything changes. You walk into the room and you got people that don't love Jesus and you walk into that room and everything changes. You go to your house and you got a lot of family fighting with each other. You walk into that room and everything changes. The atmosphere changes because of the great deposit that lives inside of you. Amen. lives inside of me Amen. whatever the situation is God wants that good deposit to be strong so that we can influence multitudes of people we can influence this world for God it comes by good deposit people that take care of that good deposit yes. taking care of it who's with me today on this so important we guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. It's His grace that will help you to move forward. Yes. It's His grace that will help you to yes. move forward today. Right. Would you stand with me as we close? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, we just we thank you for that good deposit that you've given us. And God, I I apologize. At times I've not taken that good deposit and, t and taken good care of it. I've allowed just lots of things to get in place that shouldn't be there. But I ask you, God, to forgive me. And I ask you, Lord God, to empower me. And may from this day forward, may there be a change inside of my life. May I really take care of that good deposit mm -hmm. so that I can be everything that you called me to yes. be. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you for breakthrough today. Yes, I thank you for influence and Lord. impact and a difference maker the way you've called me to be. And it comes by that good deposit being healthy and growing. Thank you, God, for every person in this house 
today, if that's you, that just say, you know, I'm not going to have you come forward right now, but if that's you, that you just go on, you know what, I just receive it, and there's some things in my life that I haven't allowed that good deposit to be taken care of properly, but I hear what you're saying, Pastor, and I, I give to God my whole life afresh today. Would you raise your hand? Yes. I'm just going to pray for you. Thank you. Yes. All over the place. Anybody else? Just raise your hand, and you can put it down. Thank you. Lord God, all over the place. I thank you for every person, God, in this house, Lord God, that we just receive that, that good deposit and care for it and, and nurture it. Nurture what you've given us, God. You've given us a good deposit. God, you say that you started a good work. Yes. And you're faithful to complete it. Right. Yes, Lord. Faithful to complete it. God, sometimes I don't feel like it's going to be completed very well because I feel like I've, I've kind of went off course. I feel like I've been, been distracted by compromise and distracted by things, Lord God. But I know that you're a God of second chance. You're, you're a God of multitudes of chances. And you keep saying, just come back aggressively to me, and I will receive you. God will not push you away. You just keep coming back to God. You're not, you're not a hypocrite when you come back to God when you've made mistakes. You're genuine. A hypocrite is a pretender. You're not a pretender. You're a contender. That's right. And God's got his hand on you. And his favor and blessing is all over you, even when you made the mistakes and blew it. God loves you so much. Be aggressive to come back to God. Yeah. Come back to the author and the finisher yeah. of your faith. He's the author and finisher. So if he started the book, he can finish the book. Let him finish it in you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Can you give God some praise as we close today? Hallelujah. God is good. What a good turnout today of people. Let's continue to influence people. Bring them on in and watch this house just grow. Every one of you are valuable and you're important. You're not another number. You're not just another person. You are valuable to God and valuable to this house. And we just thank you so much for being here today. God bless everyone. We'll see you in church. Yes, and afterwards we're going to have a